Yo! Yo, yo! What's up? <laughs> this is the truth between the beef between Ice Cube and Cypress Hill. When it really could be Cypress Hill versus Ice Cube. Um, my goodness. Where could this start from? Oh, my goodness. Uh, when Cypress Hill first came out in like 89, 90, around that time, they were making, uh, they was what, D, DPX or something like that, one of those uh, crazy rap groups that was all booted out, you know, and they were more like, oh, some kids out there playing. They were more like um, Kid Frost type rap, you know, like the essay type rap. But they were different because they had DJ Muggs, who was known for like producing and making tracks locally in the West Coast. They had they had a following that was large in the West Coast by itself. They didn't need any help from a lot of other people. Meaning that uh, when they did their thing, they had, uh, my God, I'm trying to think who all the people were there. When they were making their tapes and stuff, um, they were submitting it out to the East Coast. They never even dreamed that they would have the opportunity to, uh, to even come to the next level, to grow the company or expand or to do any of these type of things. And they were just sending shouts out to the West Coast. I mean, the East Coast or some songs. But when they had How Could I Just Kill a Man, it blew up. And it just went monumental. Did all kind of, like, numbers for them. And put Cypress Hill on the map as a worldwide entity. So, anyway, Cube had just started really blowing up and coming up on his own. When he dropped uh, America's Most over there with Hank and Shock Lee. So now that he did what he was doing, Sorry, thousand kids playing around me today. You know, it's the summertime, so that's what they do. But, uh, yeah, they had elevated to the top of their game. And they drew the attention of a lot of people like Ice Cube, who just came out, like I was saying. And when they did that, they sit over there and um, they made a connection with Ice Cube as far as the West Coast. When Cube was doing his third CD, he wanted to, you know, gravitate more and more and more over to what Cypress Hill was doing. He was hanging out with them, going on tour, and was really vibing with the fact that they really had the West Coast on lock. And he wanted to be a part of that. Because Q really didn't have that much West Side connection when he was going over there to uh, when he went to the East. That's why he had to migrate over because NWA them was running everything. So when he came back, he was kissing up to Cypress Hill because all them dudes from Southgate had his back. You know, Q wasn't a street guy. He knew street dudes, but his parents was basically, you're going to go to school, and you're going to be some of yourself, and you're going to go to college, we're going to put you in school. You know, and that's a good thing, but not when you're a rapper, I guess. You know, that's frowned upon. So, they had to mask all that and make him this West Coast Don, you know. So, when the next albums come out, his uh, death certificate, you know, it's mostly a West Coast album. You know, nobody's going to really mess with him. 
because he's over there dealing with Ice Cube and he's dealing with uh, I mean Cube is dealing with uh, Cypress Hill and Be Real and all those guys so they be I mean they got real tight So anyway, Muggs is playing some tracks from uh, Cypress Hill's album. You know, this is before Throw Your Set in the Air. This is way before that. This was some tracks he had, and Cube was like, man, that's tight. He was like, oh, that's the sample from, that sounds like that sample from this old song. That's, he was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said, we kind of used that. It's from my Soul Assassins project that uh, he was working on. Muggs is doing it. And Q kind of took that beat a little bit. And he was like, man, did you go and get the same sample that I had and, and just used it in a different way? He was like, no, 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 no. He's like, no, that's from this group. But he was, But this was the start of something's going wrong here. That sampling thing was looked over. But once the beat started, they couldn't go back to that. Like, man, remember that time he had the sample thing? It was an incident where he had listened to Muggs. Muggs had played him a track, and he had took a sample. Now, we all know what happened on the beef thing with the Throw Your Hands in the Air song. The one that he wanted on the soundtrack. But they was like, no, nah, that's going to be our first single off Temple of Boom. So we're going to give you this song. For the soundtrack, and they took that, and Q went and made the song Friday, and took the hook, talking about some throw your neighborhood in the air, like you don't care. When it's complete robbery, a throw your set in the air. He knew what he was doing, because he had did it before with King Son, on the wiki. He stole a lot of songs and concepts from King's son. Dale the homie, the funky homo sapien, King's song, son, is responsible for the Predator album. And the sad part is, King's son didn't get a dime for his work. Because he was sending Q's tracks and thinking Q was going to look out for him, but all Q was doing was taking what he had had down. So DJ Muggs actually produced three songs on the album. Like Check Yourself and then he had another two songs on there that he did for uh, for Q on the Predator album. Then after this, you know, that's just backdrop story as to what was going on. So Q goes to film the movie A Dangerous Ground. So while he's overseas doing that, A Dangerous Ground, Be Real them had already made the song Diss and Ice Cube for taking the uh for taking the hook. They was at the radio station talking about their new album coming out called Temple of Boom and Ice Cube was a thief. He just tried to steal our song. So Mac-10 heard it like, whoa, dude, these dudes out here clowning you. And he's like, what? Yeah, Mac-10 Mac is an Inglewood dude who wanted to get in the game. He had a lot of pull so over there in Inglewood. So he was like, yo, I'm going to get you up with Doug. And then we're going to make a group. Uh, we're going to be the West Side Connection. Like, we all coming together. You got the Bloods. You got the Crips over here on Western. Over here with Dub C. And then I'm coming in as a Neutron. And we all three of us going to click together. And we the West Side Connection. So you got the red, you got the blue, and the black. But they was leaving out the essay. So when this was going down and they talking about all this riding and all this, we riding down on them. And it's either you getting up with the West Side Connection and you ain't doing nothing. So when they had this type of approach, 
it rubbed a lot of people the wrong way because they were like whoa like where's the essays when they first start forming the group so they told be real why don't y'all link up with Westside Connection we gonna put this album out Westside Connection y'all gonna be a part of it this is before the song even went the way it went with the Friday situation and he was like yeah 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 you know I'm gonna think about it I'm gonna think about it that sounds dope that sounds dope let me see how you know let me go ahead and do my thing here because be real everybody was getting ready to do like they separate things like their own projects so they were all getting ready to establish other deals like Mox had the Soul Assassins project he was working on at that time he was doing production for that because he was working with the RZA from Wu-Tang so they were gonna have the Latino bass you know the yellow and everything else but the thing is be real now they they roll with the bloods mostly <laughs> you know they were Latinos and Cuban, Cuban but they roll with mostly the bloods not like the Kings and bringing the yellow flag and then that's when he was like no the yellow gonna represent the yellow people you know the Latinos you know that's what we need to have in the mix and have a whole West Side connection but that never got off the ground because of this incident so when they came back they had a sit down they squashed everything after Q did the movie and everything was supposed to be good and then Q had the uh, this song uh, that he was doing with with Caution with uh, Cam and all them so they going through the verses and it's like whoa that's what Be Real is like wait a minute that's the verse he's like I know that verse because that was mine it was one of one of the verses that he said before so he went outside to make a call and said, yo, man, I think we, that thing with Ice Cube, I think it wasn't no accident. He really meant to do it. So while he on the phone, he come back and then they listen to the song again. And then the verse was gone. Because Cube kind of peaked the fact he was tweaking off of it. Same thing you probably saw on the Beef 2 thing. Same thing it happened and that's when they decided. They already had the song recorded though. But they were going to leave it off the album. And when they decide to go ahead and release on the Temple of Boom album, they put the song on the album. And that's what really ignited people is that, uh, that, uh, what was it? Like, Words to the Wicked or Warning to the Wicked or something like that when he was talking about Ice Cube and stealing and all this stuff. So for the first time, the general public got to hear that there was a problem between Cypress Hill and Ice Cube now. And Cube didn't want that. He needed that unity with the Latino community because the Cypress Hill is rolling the West Side Connection. That's more sales. <coughs> they run LA. But Cube was thinking, I'm bigger than Cypress Hill. And that wasn't the case either. People don't understand. Cypress Hill has sold about 10 million records. Up to that point. They records were selling 2 million. 3 million. Because they were supported heavily by the Latino community. You know and they was... I mean, every show, every tour they do, every city, people in the UK was buying Cypress Hill. They related to a lot of people that was messed up, on drugs, doing PCP, low riding, skull and bones. They related to all of that era, that genre. So, all those guys would buy Cypress Hill, listen to it. And nine times out of ten, they was on some type of drug, <laughs> some type of hypnotics. But they sold. So they were huge. And Q wasn't stupid. He knew. So him being associated with them was all business friendship. It wasn't like, this is my brother. 
but as everything they tried to work things out when the song came out so Q once again he heard the album and he was like man now they got me on record he was like that's it we finna do the West Side Connection album and we gonna put this song out now when they put the song out this in uh this in uh what's his name uh West Side Connection they was working on the song and putting everything together. This Tupac had just got murdered in Las Vegas. So he's murdered. He's shot up. They got the Bow Down song out. They getting ready to ride on Cypress Hill. And then Tupac just got murdered. It was a bad precedence for what was going around at the time. It was a people was in a bad mood and a vibe and ready to kick up some dust. Bloods and Crips are, are fighting it out in the streets for real. And you got the West Side Connection. They were like, we're going to be the bridge to put all that together. But it's a lot of tension in the air. So with Ice Cube having beef with Cypress Hill, Cypress Hill run L.A. Do you know that the, the emotions that was going on through with the bloods and everything, they didn't want to be cool with no Crips at that time. It was based off that situation. So everybody that's involved, they thinking, oh man, it's going to blow down. It's going to get real violent. So especially when they drop King of the Hill and that come out on the record and they going at uh, Cypress Hill like that. Cypress Hill had already heard the song before it came out. Like, like they heard about the song was coming. So one of the guys that's cool with them is cool with, you know, Cypress Hill. Even Sendall didn't even want to get involved. This Dub C was like, man, I, I'm not getting with that. I know the homie. You know what I'm saying? And, and the Crips told him, don't get down on that. Don't ride on them like that because, you know, things is, is getting hot over here. Don't do that. And then he cool with him. So it was like, look, he cool with us. We, we do business together. I ain't getting down with it. <clears throat> so when that's said and done, they just, uh, Cypress Hill dropped that response, of course, uh, Ice Cube Killer, because they wanted to let it know that we was just talking to Ice Cube only. And Mac 10 jumped in, so now he going to get it too. But Dub is cool. So by them doing that, it was going to have to come to a situation because they couldn't do no shows. They did one show in, uh, was it Sacramento? And everybody was in there talking about Ice Cube Killer, Ice Cube Killer. And it was it was a bad situation. The brothers was fit to fight the Latinos because they were sticking up for Q. Then Cypress Hill did they show. They got all the Latinos throwing the L's up, united, ready to go to war. And the brothers is coming together, they ready to go to war. So the Mexican Mafia, the Serranos, got involved and said, if this is a problem, like y'all feel like y'all got beef, you know. We Serranos, man, we come through, man, it's finna go down. Because we we ain't gonna go for this big BS, man. They, they, we ride with the Latinos, so they ready to go to war and start a, a, a actual war in the streets. Cause some of the brothers that was riding for Q, we ain't gonna say what gang they was affiliated with, but they didn't care about no Serranos, Mexican mafias, and nothing. They like we you got guns, we got guns. Let's see what's gonna happen. Who get who? So they like we riding for Pac. We riding with Q and all this stuff, so it was crazy. It was real, real wild, wild west type stuff. And then at the same time, Q was having promotional issues with Cam and Solo from Caution under uh, Lynch Mob Records. Um, they had a discrepancy over uh, some some terminology in the contract that was getting them screwed. Now, 
Solo and Q allegedly had some beef in traffic. Hands was put on them by Solo, allegedly. And, you know, Ice Cube chain ended up missing. Watch, you know, and some, some funds. And that was that. So, when they was cool with Cypress, and they told them, hey, we got Ice Cube chain. And if y'all want to put it on stage, break them off some paper. So they broke them off a little piece of paper. They came on stage and they flashed Ice Cube's chain. And that wasn't a good sign at all. You know, people was already in a, in a thing to kick up some dust. And the Serranos, they looking at it like, cool, I'll be with this whole thing. Let's unite. So we can move them out that territory. It's business for them. They can move them out that territory or back some of the brothers up. They can start taking over some territories. So they was all for that. Let's get united. They just needed some gas to get them to okay to the wild out. And that's what they was looking for. And I think in like what's his name it was like, man, y'all need to calm this stuff down in the streets because people are getting beat up and hurt. So Ice T got involved. Ice T was like, "Look, I tried to take my kids to a movie, and all they talking about over there is Ice Cube and Cypress Hill. So I'm gonna sit both of these guys down so they can talk it out." <laughs> so T sat them both down and started talking to them. And and then they were just uh, when they talked on the phone, they they were able to talk it out because first uh, he got him in contact with Mac Ten, and he was like, "It's my boy Mac." So Be Real was like, "What's up?" And then they talked about what was going on. He was like, "Man, look, I'm riding with my boy. You a blood? I'm a blood. Let's stop this. You know, <laughs> I I don't want to be riding on another blood member. You know." So everybody wanted, didn't want the thing to continue no more. They just wanted to die right where it was at. And Ice uh, Ice T was trying to keep it peace because he knew like it's crazy out here in the streets. Whenever his homeboys is here and stuff, it's like dude, my homeboy just heard that they tried to come through and do something to one of my homeboys. <laughs> I grew up with these cats. And then uh, Mac-10 was giving him, he was like, yeah, that was a good line. That line that uh, B-Real was like, <laughs> You a Mac-10, I'm a Mac-11, I'm a higher caliber MC. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny how he rap like that, but he don't talk like that. He be like, what's up? <laughs> when he get on the mic, Yo, when I got the one time trying to come in my home. <laughs> 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 oh man but uh shoot that was basically it <clears throat> cause right after that um they had squashed everything and there was no beef no nothing but there was like no public acknowledgement this was all done behind closed doors and Q just was telling them still like look dude if, hey y'all don't do nothing else we 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 won't ride on y'all no more. So if y'all quit, we quit. We, that's all to it. We all go back to doing what we doing, you know. And then down the road, man, we could do songs together. It's all good with me. So Q was just letting them know, like either which way y'all go, I'm I'm down. But I'm down for the whole thing, which was surprising to them. Like man, Q being this aggressive, it must have really touched him in a way that he felt like he had to respond. So, anyway, after that was done, uh, Biggie Smalls got killed in March. And that's when it had to be publicly done. They were on tour at the time. And the West Side Connection was doing their West Side riding and all this stuff. And once they, Biggie Smalls got killed, they had to cancel the tour. 
because the promoters and everywhere else is like, whoa, this ain't safe. We don't know what the results is and what's going on right now. But now Tupac and Biggie did. Tour was canceled. Everybody was uh, going for like, okay, we got to hit for the for the hills right now. We got to be very careful with what we do from here on out because we don't know how this is going to turn out. So we got to do something public. And they had a song they did with uh, Shaquille O'Neal. Shaq had an album coming out and he did a video. And he had Ice Cube and Be Real in the video and they on the song. So they had to show some sort of unity at the time. They was like, hey man, they, I thought they was beefing. But they had been killed the beef months ago. But the public didn't know it. So now the general public knew that the beef was dead. So now that the public knew that the beef was dead, everything was cool, everybody could go about business and it was peace and flowers being thrown. But it could have been a lot worse. It's your boy Carcino. I'm out.